So how to find the constraint, all right? Um, and what I did is I decided to do a couple examples for you. So if we have the constraint, what we're going to do, if you guys remember on those problems, do you remember when we, had si when we were talking about sine and cosine, there was two values, right? There's two values. There's two answers for it. Do you remember that? Do you guys remember? We had two answers for like, remember we said that, um, I said the sine of pi over 6 was equal to the sine of 5 pi over 6, right? Those two angles had the exact same y coordinates. That was negative square root of 3 over 2, comma 1 half. This one was square root of 3 over 2, comma 1 half. Right? Those angles had the exact same y coordinates. So the sine of both of these angles was exactly the same. Right? So if I don't give you any constraint and I say, hey, what is that angle? Then you have to provide me with, if I say, what is the sine? And I say sine of theta when it equals 1 half, there's two answers. There's pi over 6 and there's 5 pi over 6. Right? So Unless I tell you there's a constraint, you need to provide both answers. And that can become very, very time consuming. So a lot of times, ladies and gentlemen, when what you need to understand is we're going to put constraints on the problem. So when we're talking about constraints, a lot of times you're going to have two answers and they're going to be in two different quadrants. So I'm going to put a constraint on where the answer must be. And then the constraint is going to come in a lot of different forms. But there's a couple things I want you guys to understand. First of all, I review the four quadrants. And then the points in each one of these quadrants looks like this. Right? Do you guys agree with me? The x and the y's, how they're positive and negative in those quadrants? Brett, agree? OK. So ladies and gentlemen, if I'm asking you for what, if I say, all right, there's a constraint where would it be? And I say the cosine of theta is less than 0. So cosine, Aaron, represents what coordinate? On the unit circle, cosine represents the x. So when is the x coordinate negative? Um, or when is it less than 0? So therefore, it has to be negative. What two quadrants? Or what three or four or what one? Two and three. So if you guys were doing, if I gave you a problem and I said, the constraint is cosine has to be less than 0. That means I only want you to provide an answer where there's an angle either in the second or the third quadrant. Okay? Tangent of theta. Charlie, what, is tangent of, what does tangent represent on a point on the unit circle? Y over, y over x, right? So when would y over x be positive? What quadrants would y over x be positive? First thing, right? But what if I had y over negative x? What would that be? What? That'd be negative. So that one works. So we have 1 works. The what? Well, what happens when you divide a negative and a negative? That turns positive, right? So actually, when tangent is positive, tangent is positive actually in the um, first and the third. And then what about the cosecant? Um, Fisher. Cosecant. Cosecant represents the what on the inner circle? Do you know? Do you remember? Do you remember? Do you remember? Yes, Brittany? The 1 over y. It is the reciprocal, Fisher. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So if sine of theta is y, the cosecant of theta equals 1 over y. So, Brittany, then when is sine going to be, or when is the cosecant of theta going to be negative? What quadrants? Which quadrants will 1 over y be negative? Or less, I'm sorry, is it less than 0? Yeah. When will 1 over y be less than 0? 3 and 4. Very good. OK. Huh? What negative? Well, it's just saying this has to be less. What I'm saying is they want this to be less than 0. So yeah, you want your value, your angle, to be less than 0. So you're not, you mean these negative or these negative? These? No, I'm just asking which quadrants they need to be in. So it's just the fourth quadrant and the third quadrant. 
The quadrants don't have like a positive or a negative. It's just which quadrant you want to put them in. That's what we're talking about. Um, all right, lastly, if we go back to the unit circle, OK? If I go and create a circle, ladies and gentlemen, we talked about halfway around the circle's 2 pi, or pi, and that's 2 pi. Remember, we always start at our initial side right here, OK? If I rotate if all the way around is pi, that means that's pi halves. If I rotate 3 quarters around, that's 3 pi over 2, OK? So ladies and gentlemen, if I'm trying to find what angle, which quadrant has to be between 0 and pi halves? 0 to pi halves. So that quadrant is first. What about if I said it has to be between pi and 3 pi over 2? Pi and 3 pi over 2. OK? So that's how you determine the quadrants that you're in. All right? Dang.